Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Speakeasy. This is kind of a new idea, and it was born because uh, the bars are closed, and we wanted to hang out and be with people. So, um, I, you know, this is new for all of us, but it's going to be kind of amazing. So I thought we would just have conversations, and I wanted to start with two friends of mine. Here they come. There they are. Look, Tim Ellis and Brad Blair. Howdy. Hello. Brad just put in his first name. Well done, sir. <laughs> um, so, Tim, I want to start with you. What did you bring to drink to these people? Oh, well, I, I've got a, I've got a refrigerator full of stuff. I've got the liquor cabinet behind me as well. But uh, what I'm starting with, in, in in light of everything that's going on right now, especially in the community that Brad and I live in, it's a pretty cool place. Uh, we take care of one another here, and there's a huge push to support local and buy local right now, especially with the restaurants and bars that are on the uh, the shutdown. But you can still get beer and food to go. So I am from. One of my many favorite places here from a place called the Wicked Sister. They don't sell growlers anymore. They can their own beer. Well, it's not their beer, but it's the beer they bring in. And this one is from a company called Big Lake Brewing Company. And I haven't tried this one yet. And I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. It's called Fudgy Kruger. And so it's uh, it's obviously going to be a heavier dark beer uh, playing off of the whole Freddy Kruger thing. So I thought that would be very, you know, uh, fitting for today. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm cracking it now and I'm going to pour and enjoy in our happy hour. Hi, Rebecca from Holland. Thanks for tuning in. All right. Yeah, I'm nowhere near as fancy as Tim, so I've just, uh, I've got my old standby. I've got a handful of cans of Blatts here and uh, no mug, but Always delicious, always satisfying since 1851. At, uh, these guys are in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, uh, yes. the, U the UP, as they say. So um, I brought uh, to this party, I brought uh, Narragansett. This is like the Blatt's bread of, uh, of New England. So Narragansett, of course, brewed in, in Rhode Island. Um, if you saw the movie Jaws, they were drinking narragansett so uh hey neighbor have a gansett i'm gonna class it up though brad if you don't mind i'm gonna uh go ahead and pour this in into a glass because uh because we're classy <laughs> what am i wasting you're, you're wasting that good tin taste <laughs> oh there's plenty of tin taste here my friends so tell me about life in the upper peninsula right now uh, what's going on up there with you guys like every place else nothing um <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It, it's it, it's odd times. We've never seen anything like this before. Um, hopefully, we never see it again in our lifetime. But yeah, I mean, it's um, right now. For those of you that don't know us, Tim and I run the Upper Peninsula Paranormal Research Society, and we're the guys that put on, along with the team, uh, the Michigan Paranormal Convention. And man, we're just looking at all of these events getting canceled left and right. It's sad to see. Tim and I were supposed to be in South Dakota, I think the end of next month, Tim, for uh, yeah. a, a paranormal event in Deadwood. And we just heard from the event company last week and they said, hey, guys, we're we're going to have to postpone it best. So it's yeah, it, it's scary what's going on um, right now. Michigan Paracon, we keep getting people messaging pretty much every day at this point. You know, what's going on? What's the status of the event? Um We just lost Brad. We lost his audio. We lost his audio. Say it It'll again, Brad. Pretty face. I know. Well, maybe he'll pick that up again. We'll see. Yeah, um, but I, I can pick up right where Brad was talking off that we are getting messages. Uh, Brad's on mute. Uh, is, am I on mute? Your, no, Brad muted it. Oh. Can't maybe unmute your guest. He has oh. like 10 cats. Maybe his cat walked across the yeah. keyboard. Muted oh. it. Well, Brad, we'll, we'll, I'm sure Brad will come back. But uh, anyway, um, yeah. oh, look, Wayne Miracle. Howdy, gents. Hey, I Wayne. use that term loosely. Yes. Oh, Good to Wayne. see you, bud. <laughs> so to, to, to pick up where Brad was talking there, though, Jeff, yeah, we're getting people calling and checking every, every day right now about uh, the 11th Annual Michigan Paranormal Convention right. at the end of August. And as of right now, everything's still a go. I mean, we have no reason right now to believe that it won't be a go. It's just obviously everyone's a little, uh, hello, fellow youpers, Jennifer. Hello. Um, <laughs> got a can of Lysol. We got beer. It's uh, it's all right. I got my Lysol <laughs> behind me right over there. So anyways, uh, 
Yeah. So as as of right now, everything is a go. Um, cool. we're, we're we're not looking at anything different right now. Yeah. Well, I think Brad's still trying to get reconnected. Um, so we'll we'll see how that goes. But anyway, no, I I thought this would be fun because uh, I I came up with the idea this morning. I literally texted you guys mm -hmm. and said, "What are you doing at four thirty? Like we could have a virtual beer." You know, and what you, what you made me do was actually shower and put clothes on today. Are Are you wearing pants? Because we wouldn't know. <laughs> I am, I promise. <laughs> huh. A lot of people checking in. Hello, Julie. Thanks for everybody, uh, for all you guys checking in. Mm -hmm. And um, wait, what is this? Wait, Joan, no beer near you? Uh, explain that. You're going to have oh. to write another comment. Because Good. I know around me anyway, I'm in Massachusetts. I can tell you, Tim, our uh, our liquor stores, our grocery stores are booming. Mm -hmm. um, yes. It is a good time to own either one of those types of businesses. Agreed. And, and, and same here, obviously, as we're seeing across the news everywhere, um, you know, the, the same aisles are empty in our, our our big stores as they are where you are, I'm sure. Yeah. So far, thank goodness, there's been no uh, panic on beer yet. There's still plenty of beer to be found. So Brad's not here, so we can talk about him, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, I picture Brad being the type that ran out and just bought all the booze, thinking, let the fools buy toilet paper and food <laughs> yeah. because this stuff here, I can trade this for whatever I possibly need. Well, right? uh, yeah, I mean, he's thinking that down the road of bartering. So at some point we're going to have to barter, right? <laughs> we're going to get back to those days. Right, right. Yeah. So how much, how much toilet paper? Right. Yeah. How much toilet paper do you have? Cause I got a lot of beer. They're like, Ooh, <laughs> I'll trade exactly. you one beer for 12 rolls of toilet paper. And pretty soon, uh, you know, Things get interesting. Uh, yeah. MJ over in the UK, day 15 of their lockdown. My goodness. So, man, um, man. yeah, so it's it's uh, still going. And there's Elizabeth from Amsterdam. People checking in all over the world. We appreciate it. And I hope you guys are all having a drink with us. And I think it's just mm -hmm. us, uh, Tim, I, unless you want to text Brad and tell him to try to I, try yeah. again. Let me see. Uh, let me see all what's right. going on with, with the man and what's happening. Look uh, at you with your tap shirt on. I just had to grab something real quick. <laughs> <laughs> and your Supernatural Haunts uh, shameless book plug right over your shoulder. What That's are you well talking done. about? I don't know what you're <laughs> talking mean... about. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Who wrote the forward to that book? I heard he's amazing. Yeah, a wonderful author. Yeah, um, we only had to bribe him with beer. And uh, <laughs> Here we are. Jeff Belanger wrote the wrote it, so I we did. couldn't be happier. I did, I did. Look, yes. we, got, we got Vicky in New Zealand. Thank you, Vicky, for joining us. And uh, Nova Scotia's here and all kinds of people. Um, so uh, and then we've got someone drinking decaf in Framingham, Mass. And that's OK, Mary. We, that's it's all right. Good. Yeah. I don't think we drink coffee at happy hour. Totally right. fine. Totally fine. All mm -hmm. are welcome here. So um, anyway. Uh, oh, and Scott is drinking a 603 from the 603. And uh, if we if I remember Any correctly, that would be um, Chicago, right? I'm going to go with you on that one. I just I, know I, the I 906. Know. That's us. I know the 906. That's all I know. So, so if you know where Chicago is. So, Tim, when did you yeah. think this was serious? When you were, I mean, at what point were you like, oh, man, this isn't just, uh, you know, this yeah. is more than, than, you know, what was up? Well, because my my real job, the the job that pays the bills, not the, this wonderful book, um, but <laughs> you for natural haunts. Yes. Whoa, yeah. Uh, my real job is uh, my wife and I, um, Brad says he's trying to get back in and booted him. So probably okay. didn't like his beer choices when I'm thinking if he, tr um, he can try again, um, uh, he can keep trying, but, um, so no, I, I it's yeah. Sorry. Go on. What, what point yeah, did you so, think? Uh... So my wife and I own a radio station here in Sault Ste. Marie. So we're, we're part of the media circle. We're part of the, uh, essential jobs. So if it ever yep. does come up complete lockdown, um, I'll still have to get into work and do the morning show and get the information out there that needs to be submitted. And um, so, you know, we were getting a lot of things through the media coming through that I, I that I had been watching pretty closely. And I'm kind of a news junkie myself as well. So I, I've been sticking pretty close to the story for quite a while. Um, so, you know, I mean, I, I can't really put a date on it when I said, OK, this this is getting serious. But it's something I've been watching since. The reports first started to come out and, uh, you know, and then you've got doctors. I've got some friends who work in the hospital and they're back in those. Even then they were kind of saying, you know, hey, the flu kills more. And and I think that's kind of what we were morbidly hanging our hat on saying, all right, this isn't going to be any worse than the flu. And then, you know, 
it, it, it changed so fast, so fast to the point where, you know, your, your head was kind of spinning and trying to, uh, to bring it all in and, and make sense of it all. And, and I think maybe just now um, it's starting to really feel real. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. It was, uh, it was really something. There's Greg Lawson, our friend, hey, off Greg. Of some of your events. So um, yeah. just uh, just checking in. We've got um, my daughter's watching. I think my wife is watching. 603 is New Hampshire. I can't believe uh, me of all people couldn't remember you that. that so, sorry. Anyway, <laughs> uh, but uh, but I did. Yeah. So, you yeah, know, it was weird and it's weird to be isolated. You know, uh, like you guys, I like to go out and hit the bars and see friends yes. and, and all that other stuff. And and I was like, oh, man, we're stuck. What do we do? And mm -hmm. then I started thinking about this <laughs> and I was like, Hey, we could, we can, I can see my friends and we can talk and other people can listen if they want. No, it, it's outstanding. And my wife and I were just talking about this before I came on for this, because again, we own, we own a radio station. So yeah. we make our money by selling advertising and doing promotions and trying to sell advertising and promotions And this, what's going on. It, it's impossible. People oh, yeah. are, people are worried. They're, they're, they're cutting back. They're holding back. So we're trying to find, creative ways that we can continue to do our business and 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 do some sales at the same time so what we found is that we're still doing the things we love but man right. we're creative with it uh, i totally get it so my podcast new england legends um yeah. we i work with my my partner ray Ozier, radio station we're in their studios all the time and it's one of those things that um yeah same thing everything it's the same here of course right where mm -hmm. uh the restaurants and bar the bars are all closed. The restaurants are trying to figure it out. You know, how can we survive on takeout? People right. have lost a lot of income. I mean, I know for me, I mean, all my live events and lectures, they, they froze up, they stopped. So yeah. that, in that income's gone. The TV yep. show I work for is paused because people can't travel right now. So everything's really uncertain. It's really scary. But I also think there's an amazing opportunity right now for us to kind of like Pull each, pull each other together and yeah. and get back to our families get back to what's important and uh and then think about others right um so i mean that's that's the opportunity we have i just touched my face i'm sorry the one thing this <laughs> thing has made me realize is how much i touch my damn face because the minute they told me i can't i i realize i'm doing it every time now so it's been kind i know of isn't that funny? Your wife should say hi. This is really informal. I can't stress enough. This is I want it to be like a bar. We're not like following some strict guideline here. We're just chatting. So I think she should, she's, she's in the other room watching this right now, actually. So. Uh, well, tell her to come in and be part of it. Say hi. She she she'll be out here. She's listening. So I'm sure she'll come and pop in and oh, say hi. Kimberly wants to know, are there any pets that you can pop on the live stream? Uh we've got two dogs and three or, and a cat, so three animals total. Um, yeah. My biggest dog is laying right here at my feet. He's an 80-pound collie. <laughs> He's not lifting uh, him up. Australian Shepherd mix, but I don't think I can get him up here real quick. No, so. that's fair. Hey, do we? Brad gave up. Is that what's going Brad, on? No. There she, here she is. I'm in my pajamas. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> that's what I'm wearing, though. Wait, are, are those your day everyone listening. Wait, are those your daytime pajamas or your nighttime pajamas? <laughs> I've been in these all day. Those are her good pajamas, the daytimes, yes. Right, yeah. So, I mean, isn't it funny? Like, I, I don't know about you guys. So, around, like, 4 o'clock here, I'm like, I should shower <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and get dressed. And then, yeah, you know, I, like, I've, I I've seen some people... Um, saying, you know, enough with the memes, enough with making jokes about it. But I think we need a, a sense of humor. I think that's how we deal with stress, especially stress we're not used to, is is a sense of humor. <laughs> so, uh, you know, wait. so I've seen some of the funniest memes um, here, going around. Here comes, wait, here comes my pet. No, wait, yes. she's, wait, there she is. Is that your daughter? Is that well, that's, no, that's oh. a bird. That's a parrot. Oh, right there. <laughs> there she is. Hi. I didn't know you had a pet bird. I do. This is Nimbus, and my daughter's in here. There. Hi. Nice I, to meet you. Yes, daughter. We've heard a ton about you. We've never met you, but we've heard a ton about you. So it's over 21. I don't know if you yeah. know this. <laughs> Although we're in no danger of losing our uh, liquor license, I guess. But there's my, my parakeet. What's the parakeet's name? Nimbus, because Nimbus. she looks like a storm cloud. I don't know if she'll talk. We can try. <laughs> Nimbus, can you want to say something? Can you say, listen to the New England Legends podcast? Oh, I heard that. I think I heard it. I heard it. That was me. Oh. <laughs> where's your wife at? And where's Brad? And where's Brad's wife? Brad? Br Brad is not my wife. <laughs> oh, there goes the bird. 
Okay. Brad said he was rebooting and was going to try again. All right. I, maybe he'll make it in. I mean, whatever. How much beer do you have left? Uh, well, I've, I'm going to refill right now. This is a oh. nice small size can. Wow, and I'm still on number one. I'll have to uh, I'll have to grab another. So, if anyone has never been to the to the Michigan Paracon before, um, my favorite part about it, and I, I've always said, I was like, you know how there's there's uh, paranormal conferences, and sometimes you go to a bar. I feel like your event, and I say this with from the bottom of my heart, from the warmest <laughs> parts, is like your event's like a bar that happens to have a paranormal conference. Yeah, and I would and, agree. Uh, <laughs> and it was so. It's always so much fun to go to your your events because it's like it's it's like a weird family reunion, right? Mm -hmm. Like a very dysfunctional uh, family reunion, but still one one nonetheless. Hey, look, there's Rick Amorta Shrek. What's up? Hey, Rick. Hey, Rick. Um, he's, he, he's bringing Ouija Zilla with. Well, not the actual board, but the plan check. So Rick is the proud builder and owner of the yes. uh, world's largest Ouija board. I got to see it in Salem that night. I got to go Whoa, there when nice. it was, yeah. So I got to go check it out. It was really cool. Um, you know, Rick, of course, part of the Talking Board Historical Society and um, and a, an awesome resource. That Ouija was was something to behold. So um, it's cool to see all it's cool to see all these people, all these folks uh, checking in from all over the world. This is awesome. We had New Zealand and Canada, and we have uh, parts of Europe. So, uh, oh, wait, oh, wait, look, this is a question for you from Jess Smith. Any plants for Supernatural uh -huh. Haunts Volume Two? Ah, Jess, wonderful question. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at Brad's text that just came through. Um, yes, Brad, you're hopeless. <laughs> he says uh, nothing else running, but it's telling me the camera's being used elsewhere. So he has to shut off Skype. Tell him to turn off Skype, which probably started automatically. Make and sure then Skype is not running. Yeah, Skype fights with this thing. Is this All the right. most professional thing you guys have ever seen, or what? <laughs> <laughs> It's it's it, it's par for the course for us, so we're we're fine with this. Yeah. Um, oh, Supernatural Haunts too. Yes. Um, the the uh, publishing company, Visionary Publishing, which was owned by Rosemary Ellen Galley, rest yeah. in peace. Yeah. Beautiful woman. Um, her husband is running it now, and we had already had agreements to do a second book, but the second book we're working on right now, which will be out this summer, is not the follow up to Supernatural Haunts. It's based on Great Lakes Legends. No, oh, that cool. is our second book. Then our third book is planned to be um, the follow-up to Supernatural Haunt. So yes, we are planning on a follow-up, but it'll be the next book around. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. W one thing I've been doing with the downtime is um, actually um, I wrote a memoir about my Kilimanjaro experience, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah, and and I, it's it's. I mean, I literally just turned it in the other day. Like we've gone through the edits. We, uh, we're we're finalizing photos and covers. Uh, it's not going to be out until next April, April 2021. But uh, now that that's done, I'm like, wow, I think I'll be, uh, you know, I, I'm pretty sure I'll be working on another book here very soon because I got the downtime. Mike Anthony Dotson wants to know, will there be a new supernatural haunts audio book narrated by Morgan Freeman? Because because <laughs> Tim, your voice obviously isn't good enough for Mike Anthony. <laughs> Apparently not, Mike. Um, actually. <laughs> Again, we, with with the passing of Rosemary and as quick as that happened, uh, her and I were actually in talks for me to actually do the audio book to Supernatural, and I'm hoping it's still going to happen. But again, when when and where everything happened, it was just one of those things where um, we didn't get that finalized. But I'm yeah. hoping to, yeah, for yeah, sure, totally. So Andrew wants to know if uh, if you guys have a podcast. You do. Andrew's a big time listener for oh. New England Legends, and uh, oh, yeah. Andrew. They uh, the creaking door podcast has been going on between with Tim and Brad for for many ages, and so um, uh, what's this? What's going on with that right now? Are you guys knocking out some more episodes? Yeah, we are. Um, we creaking door paranormal uh, radio is exactly the name of it. The uh, podcast we've been we just celebrated our fourth or fifth year doing it. Um, yeah. We try to do we try to do two a month. Our latest one we actually did was. Um, it was it was the recording that we did at, at Michigan Paracon ten with the Parent family. It was the first time having all that right. on stage. So right, right. We, yeah, we just released that about a week ago. So you can find our podcasts um, at well slackjawpunks.com is our is our mothership, if you will. That's who hosts us. But you can find it on iTunes, Spotify, all all the main um, venues as well. But we're out there, absolutely. 
Yeah, very cool. Look at this. We got Pete Hall from the UK wearing a lot of Red Sox gear. That's kind of cool. I mean, for me. Yeah. <laughs> Not for you. Uh, uh, hey, at this point, I'd just be happy to have sports back. I'm That's killing me. So um, what people don't know, most people don't know, is that uh, Tim, Brad, and I uh, have been communicating through strictly memes for, <laughs> I don't know, four years? Like, I mean, years. Uh, it's been a few. I know <laughs> years. Yeah. So uh, it's it's so funny. The um, uh, so, so like you know when when my phone buzzes and I see it's from Tim or Brad, I usually grab it right away because it's usually <laughs> like you got to bring your A game with this crew, right? Like you wouldn't send a media if it's if it's like a, a smirk, you would never send that, right? You'd you'd get no. oh no, you'd get shunned. Like <laughs> it, so, it's been pretty top quality. And you mentioned some of the memes going on about coronavirus. I think that's some of the ways we just deal with this yes. stuff, right? We deal with it with humor. And sure. we've been doing that for, for a long, long time, you know? And so, um, I don't think it's all that unusual. Uh, if we don't laugh, sometimes we'll cry, you know? Well, that's just uh, it. And, you know, I, I know I, you see some people out there using uh, on social media saying that they're upset that people are making light of this by sharing these gifts and, and we're not taking it serious. And, and I don't think it's that at all. It's just our way of humor helps the situation. And right. sometimes you need that to, to, to negate the stress and the worry. Right. Right. Scott wants to know when we're going to do an episode on Tom Brady, Tom Brady's not a new England legend anymore. He's uh, going to Florida. Well, he's going to be a legend now. He's he's gone. Right, he's gone. Yeah. I was thinking about this. I was like, actually, moving to Florida for the cold winter months is pretty much the most New England thing you could possibly do. <laughs> right, exactly. So uh, uh, I think it makes he sense. Was, got, he, he wanted to play till 45. He's, what, 41 or 42 now. So he's got yeah. two or three years left. Why would you not want to go play where it's sunny and warm all the time? Well, I mean, here's hoping there's a football season, right? Yeah, I mean, that's true goodness so yeah. uh yeah so there's that but um but yeah but so so the radio station um are people turning to you now like what's what's life like i mean are you you know obviously radio is meant to entertain us inform us but at what point are you now a much more critical part of the community you know what i mean well, like you know, people are now that, turn to you right and i think a lot of people forget that that radio is actually we're governed by the fcc through right. the federal government we are set up to actually be a place where people can find information in a national crisis. So our license are, are geographically assigned to certain areas to make sure that every area has some form of radio that can get to the people if there is a national emergency. Um, just the other day, this past week from our lawyer, uh, that, that is our lawyer for the company, sent me the letter from the State Department um, letting so if I if we ever get to a, an extreme lockdown, I can show this letter to get through whatever the roadblocks wow. or whatever would be set up to get me to work uh, because uh, we are considered an essential uh, service to the community during a uh, situation. So that was really surreal to get that letter and, and to think that maybe I hope not, but you know it, it's there if we ever have to use it. And so I think more and more people are turning to. Um, to, to, to media right now, and especially in a smaller community like ours, um, radio really is the last true local media. So we're the ones who can be on the front lines right away talking about our local hospitals, talking about our local health departments and stuff like that. So I, I think a lot of people are starting to find that local feel again that 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 we're able to, to give. Uh, Grant's checking in from Australia. Grant, God bless him. His his poor suitcase blew apart at your event, Tim, and uh, we were able to get him to Walmart, get a new suitcase, so that the poor chap could get home. Good to see you, Grant. I hope yes. things are okay there in Australia, and Absolutely. hopefully we see you again in August. I, um, I remember, I remember his family being at MI Paracon. Whenever we get people who travel, we had one family one year come all the way in from England and the Australian uh, connection last year. So yeah, whenever we get people who travel that far for our event, we're we're well aware who they are. Yeah, and, uh, so Walmart has saved many people <laughs> right uh, in in crisis that way. So Suzette wants to know what's your favorite munchies you brought and uh, bought in bulk for the mm -hmm. uh, isolation apocalypse. That's an excellent question, Tim. What's your go to? Uh well, to be honest, and and this is a good thing, Suzette. Uh, it's a great can you question. hold on a second, Tim? I yeah. Uh... There yeah. you go. Drink number two. Yeah, we got we got one soldier down. I'm sorry. All right, please continue. <laughs> Your favorite snack? 
Uh, well, here's the good thing, Suzette. Great question. Um, if I was buying for this situation, I would have a, a ref the top of my refrigerator would be filled with all the junk food and the chips in the world. Thank God my wife's doing the shopping because I may come out of this. Um, I make number two. I may come out of this by not putting on 100 pounds, which is a good thing. Yeah. Because no, my, wife, sure. my wife's doing the shopping and she's shopping healthy. Um, if I had my choice, it would be potato chips. Like yeah. no like no one's business. How about you, Jeff? What are you doing? No, that's a good question. So Christine wants to know what I'm drinking. Uh, if you're yeah. watching from the beginning, Christine, by the way, Christine was there with me at the summit of Kilimanjaro three years ago, almost to the day. I'm having Narragansett tonight, uh, Christine. So um, that's what's going on. And Christine is a bit of a beer snob. I know because I've had uh, many a beer with Christine over the years now. And so um, Has I'm she sure been she's been on yet. No, she's not a paranormal person. She was okay. a Kilimanjaro person, but she should go because you guys have a great bar and she likes alcohol. <laughs> As you said, we happen to be a, a big party that has uh, paranormal stuff attached to it. I know. Like she didn't even, yeah. have, she wouldn't even have to go to the, the lecture. She could just hang at the bar, yeah, which would be amazing. I feel so bad for Brad. I, I People can't see this, but he keeps trying to poke in here. Yeah, and he's obviously having some some struggles. And he said uh, he uh, he said he removed Skype, and it's still locking him out because he did connect for a while, and he was on with us for the first five minutes. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what what to tell you, but um, but I'm glad that uh, you're here because otherwise yeah, we just yeah, meet. I'm, I'm here. I just I just touched my face. I just again, I right? God, I blame the beer, but I haven't really left the house. So is it okay? I think I need so. A, I need a ruling on this. <laughs> um, I'm going to give you a pass on it. So Thank what you. was your snack? What's your, what's your goal? Oh, right. Snack? My snack. So, yeah. um, uh, we've been, we've been, uh, first of all, I've learned we are terrible at long-term shopping. <laughs> so really not good. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I went out uh, a couple days ago and I got like lots of stuff like cans of soup and all kinds mm -hmm. of things. We're okay with toilet paper. So that's, that's good. Right. Um, but at the same time, uh, like like i realized how how much we shop fresh at our house yeah right we, we usually hit the grocery store like two times a week and then you run out for that thing you forgot mm -hmm. so you're like oh i need a green pepper for this thing we're cooking tonight and we cook a, at home a lot by the way we're not fancy pants going out like we cook a lot mm -hmm. and um but but the grocery stores are so close to where i live like we're talking like less than one mile so you just you just you don't even worry about it. You're like, yep, I'll run out and get a green pepper, no big deal. Oh, we also need a red pepper. I'll go back. You know, you just do it. And so suddenly we're in a position where we're like, oh man, we get, we're we're freezing foods that we we never really froze before. Um, and and then realizing that we really do like some of those nice cooked meals that require fresh produce yep, and stuff. Exactly. And um, dang, we don't have it. No, that's just that's that's I think that's been the biggest adjustment through all this is life. We, we've never had to have our lives really interrupted no. like this. No. Nope. And is the mighty Mac closed, Tammy? No, it is not, Tammy. Although um, all of us youpers up here are uh, would, wouldn't mind it <laughs> if the uh, if the bridge closed off for a while. But uh, no, the, the, the mighty Mac is wide open. Uh, state to state travel so far is 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 still good, but the Canadian border did close, and we're right on the Canadian border, and that will affect uh, both of our economies, ours more because there's a bigger population over there that will affect us a bit. Yeah. So Sault Saint Marie, Michigan, for those who don't know, is uh, there's the Upper Peninsula, this so Michigan, right? Like this mm -hmm. is how they, and then they're up here, and the UP, like if you're in the wrong spot, and this has happened to me, you'll actually pick up a cell signal from Canada and go into oh, international God. roaming. Yes, yeah, because it's, it's just a river that separates you and not even a huge river, just a river. And so uh, at the same time, uh, yeah, right. So the Canadian border is closed. I, it's, yeah. I think it's a matter of time. You know, I mean, New Jersey, Connecticut, California, mm -hmm. New York City, like are all going on total lockdowns. And right. it, when you look at what's happening in Italy, uh, you realize like that's what we all have to do. We just we have to do it. And so better we just kind of get used to it. It's a yeah. huge hit to our economy. I know, I get it. Um, but we got to look that uh, we we got to we got to look out for others, right? We got to look out for our, our our parents and grandparents. And what you said, Tim, you're so right, right? We haven't seen anything like this in our lifetime. My parents haven't seen anything like this in their lifetime. No. My exactly. dad was was telling me a story. Um, <clears throat> my grandfather, his dad, uh, was used to tell him about scarlet fever. When, mm -hmm. when my grandfather uh, was was a child, 
his brother died from scarlet fever and he would get uh choked up whenever he told the story he never told me the story because i was a little kid and he died when i was in high school but he would tell my dad about you know his brother dying from scarlet fever right and so plagues have hit us this isn't new right it's just new for us new for us and, and new for right. a few generations it's been a long time since we've been hit with anything like yeah this, for know? sure Jennifer says she likes how I do the Michigan thing. <laughs> yeah, I've been to Michigan. I go to Michigan twice a year now between the MI Paracon and the uh, Old Mill Paracon. Yeah. Um, oh, look. Hey, there's Shane Pittman. Hey, y'all. Shane is from the Holzer Files show yes. on the Travel Channel. Which I and, love the show. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Great Aren't they, they're doing a great job. So, Shane, welcome. And um, they're and scheduled Shane. to be there, too, right? Yes, Shane, by the way, uh, the, whole, the, the entire cast for the Holzer File is coming to the 11th annual Michigan Paranormal Convention. So we're looking forward to having Shane with us and the whole crew. Obviously, Dave has been, uh, Schrader has been yeah. here many, many times, but um, the rest of the crew will be their first time here. We're excited that's, for it. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, so Christine, her group stopped ghost hunting. Yeah, kind of yeah. have to, right? I mean, that's that's yeah. all of us. Although, on the other hand, I'm, I'm sort of like, you know, like I, I like to look for legends and I like to go often go to places where there's no people, like up in the mountains right. and stuff like that. So, um Oh, look at this comment. Ready, Tim? Oh, oh Brad. <laughs> oh, we lost Brad. I got a text from Brad oh. just now. It said he's down for the count. He down tried. But ah. that's okay. Brad, well, we appreciate you. Get him back on. Yeah. Well, we'll do it yeah. again. So for here's sure. the like so here's the thing. This software, I've got this software. We've got the this audience and these people. And I'm I'm kind of thinking, like, whatever. We'll just do it whenever we want to do this. We'll just yeah, have this some, is fun. This is great. Yeah. And that was yeah. the point. Have some drinks, chat with each other, get caught up, you know, and, and stuff like that. So I, I can only imagine how much beer Brad is going to buy right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I mean, he doesn't have to go to work tomorrow, so he's good. It's basically <laughs> a Friday for him. <laughs> yeah, so so Brad owns a a, a store, right, that, that yeah, caters he, he owns, to tourists. Right? He owns uh, three now? And, Two or three. Uh, um, I'm sure yeah. they're shut down, right? Well, they were for the season anyway. Um, so it's kind of you know, right now it's not really effective in the, in that sense, but his wife who works for the school system and obviously his son who's in school, um, you know, they're all home now. So they're being affected by it that way. So um, I know Brad was joking around saying he was getting a lot of the, the work done for our new book. He, when it was just him at home, he says, I don't know what I'm going to do now with the, with the kid running around and, and his wife home that uh, he's going to have to try to get those chapters done still. But yeah, yeah. no, for sure. Well, people seem to like this uh, drink all around thing. Great. I love this program. I've never heard of it. Um, hey, John. Yeah, I saw it. John, you, you're right, John. I saw that Dustin Perry was doing one of his uh, magical mystery box uh, talks earlier on Facebook Live. So that was great to see that. And I knew we were doing this uh, later. So this is what, you know, I mean, how awesome is that? That today's technology is allowing us to still be together even while we self quarantine for sure. And, and I mean, you know, think of if this had happened 15, 20 years ago, there was none of this. Yeah. No, just, exactly. just 15, you know, just 15 years ago, there was, there was none of this. So Debbie's yeah. writing too. That's, that's good. You know, we got to make the most of it. Um, yeah. you, you know, and, and I know out here schools are canceled for three weeks till April 7th. Right now we're all sort of assuming that's going to get extended. Mm -hmm. Um, is that the same near you guys? Yeah, my brother is a teacher here at uh, the local area high school, and um, they uh, were on the three-week lockdown, but he had already said that they've been given the instructions by the um, the, the heads that uh, at least get a, another three weeks prepared. So it, it, yeah. they're, they're, they know it's going to happen. It's just a matter of being told. Yeah, no, I totally get it. And I, and I think the same thing out here. And, you know, we just got to get used to this new normal. But I do like that we can have our little speakeasy here because I don't have a liquor license. I'm going to be honest with you, Tim. I don't have one. No, neither uh, do I. Yeah. And so uh, I, I didn't card. I didn't card any of these people that have been commenting. I have no idea if they're 21 or not. Uh, so. Oh, cheers. Yeah. So, but I mean, you know, what are they going to do to us? Right. Uh huh. Yeah, they're not going to come. Chris and Wes, they know that Brad loves his blats. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, Brad, yeah. No, it's uh, it's good the, times. The good man. thing about liking blats is I don't think Brad has to worry about anyone buying it out on him. Yeah, <laughs> right. Can you imagine? You go to the liquor store, you see all these people like fighting with each other and this like stuff flying out the window and then this like 
cases and cases of blats and just Brad walking up and no one fighting him at all. That's like, right. He just grabs his stuff and walks out. <laughs> he's just, oh, oh, I don't even know. Oh, that's fine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah. Anyway. Oh, look, Jessica. Jessica's on, on uh, second beer. Well done. Cheers, Jessica. Very good. Yes. Cheers. Yeah. Tim, to uh, you. You too as well. Cheers. Hey, Cheers. look, it's, it's me. It's me through beer. That is awesome. Mine's too dark to do that. Whoa. Oh, I had a, that's a beer filter. <laughs> I like that. Oh, look it. The beer. This, I like that. this is dude. If we don't win at least an Emmy for this, <laughs> like, whatever, whatever this is, uh, I don't, I don't know what to call this, but I love it. Cause it's new when we got it. We got to do this in today's world right now. So, um, do we meet here every day at four thirty? Is that the plan? Every day? Are we going to have everyday fun day? Well, I well, you still have to work because you got a radio station. I do, yes, like, but I can tell you this, and don't take this the wrong way. As as like, I don't want someone reaching out to me saying, you know, uh, Tim, I can get you help. Um, but I can tell you that my my enjoyment of this Monday through Thursday has picked up a little bit <laughs> since all of this started. Uh, usually, right? I'm. A Friday, Saturday, uh, enjoy my adult beverages, um, kind of thing. But, uh, you know, Hey, these are different times, right? They are indeed different yeah. times for sure. Um, yeah, for sure. So, uh, this is Amy who's having coffee right now. Funny thing about Amy, Amy's the person that roped me into climbing Mount Kilimanjaro for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Oh, oh fantastic. Yeah. What a great, and, uh, what a great story that is. Was and, there a doc- did it, did anyone film that? Could you do a documentary on that? Well, I took uh, many, many uh, hundreds of photographs, yeah. and um, I thought I would write a book about it. I don't know if you were listening a few minutes ago. Oh, I was. I remember you saying, "Damn yeah, you it, did the Tim!" Memoirs. You did the memoirs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, so anyway, I'm talking about video, like a video. Uh, document. Yeah, I did. I did. You know, when we were way up high uh, at the top of the mountain, it was um, not a lot of air, so sure. so pretty tricky to breathe. Um, the camera were having trouble breathing. Yes, the cameras, well, the humans that operate the cameras are having trouble getting them out and going, hey, let's film this. This will be great. <laughs> it was more like, here's the top. Okay, let's go back. <laughs> it's such a great story, though. It needs to be told more. Yeah, well, thanks. I'm, I'm working on that. Good. Jeez, dude. So, uh, yeah, do you, have, do you have questions for me, Tim? Are we turning the tables here? I mean, well, yeah, I, I'd be happy to interview. I've interviewed you many times. You, want to you have, I know. Interview? So, actually, I did want to ask you this. So, you said you did the memoirs of mm-hmm. Kilimanjaro. Is that the first non-paranormal written work you've done? Yes. Yeah, it is. It is. And um, uh, yeah. I wrote it in nine. You've written books now, so you know the deal. That's two. That's keep talking. Two down. I'll go grab a cool one, but keep talking because I'll be listening. I'll okay. Be All right. Yeah. Get another one. Oh, okay. So um, uh, the the Kilimanjaro memoir, to, I wrote it in nine drafts, nine drafts of a book. So that's like rewriting, rewriting, rewriting. Uh, I'd show it to some friends and they'd say like, oh, it's nice. And I was like, oh, not nice. That's the worst. So uh, it's really hard to be objective with your own story. You know what I mean? Right. Oh, yeah. like, like, like if someone else tells me their story, because I've been writing people's paranormal experiences for decades now, you mm-hmm. know? And so when you tell me about your paranormal experience and you're like, yeah. And then I stopped at the grocery store and I picked up, you know, a bag of rice and I came home and then there was the ghost. I know the audience doesn't care about the grocery store and the bag of rice. I know to just cut that out. Right. Like no one cares. But when you're the one telling it, you, you've told, you told me, uh, you know, it was about, you told me for a reason. Um, so there's that, Oh God, we just got a good question from shell. Have you ever conducted an investigation while intoxicated? (laughs) Well, (laughs) come on, this is, let's be honest. Well, first of all, uh, I'll, I'll answer that. Here's my next beverage. Have you tried this one yet? PBR? The hard coffee PBR? No, I oh. don't. I don't like coffee. I don't drink coffee. Oh, well, then you're not. And, and I don't like PBR, but. <laughs> <laughs> this, this feels like the inverse of you got your peanut butter and my chocolate. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But I, hate I do enjoy a hard coffee. Well, and there you have one. P- I didn't know PBR. Is there anything those guys can't do? <laughs> it's new. Uh, I just had my first one this weekend, so I still had a few in the fridge, and it's it's good. It's good. They're heavy, but they're yeah, good. yeah. Uh, we're gonna be ripped soon, and we're gonna be spilling all kinds of secrets. Isn't that what happy hour is all about? Yeah. Let me <laughs> tell you what Josh Gates is really like. 
He's awesome. Uh, Another guy from Massachusetts. Look at you! You're 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 breaking news right now, Andrew Warren. PBR has flavors he didn't know. Yeah, see, they do, and and uh, hopefully PBR will cut us a check for this plug. Um, I hope so. Tammy yeah. tastes like uh, Kahlua. All right, yeah, I didn't know. Right, Tammy, it's a very good uh, comparison. It's 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 a th it's creamier than I anticipated. I thought. Listen, it'd be Shane, stick to the paranormal and quit critiquing beer. I mean, some people <laughs> love PBR, man. Jeez, aren't you from the south? That's like, you know. Isn't PBR like good stuff down there? I think so. Well, it, Dude, like... wait. Look at Look at what happened. <laughs> I'm almost out of beer, too. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Wait, we're going, we're going full screen. I, I just had to run to the beer store. <laughs> so, I have had Welcome that. Welcome back. Hey, thanks. I, I got that up in Estes Park about three weeks ago. The Paps Coffee. It's good stuff. It's great for oh, yeah. Oh my god! It is. It's a, Wait, it would be a great morning, morning drink. Wait, you guys, stop! Yeah. Stop! Everyone, shut up! Oh, Jeff's still here. Brad, wait. Hey, so what? listen, I, I I have a really strong feeling that uh, you just simply didn't have beer and you ran out to get it. It wasn't had no had no problem with connections or web or anything. Paranormal, Jeff. It was yeah. something something from the netherworld. So should we start over, Tim? Yeah, let's start oh, all over. Oh, yeah. This is what? So this is to, wait, cheers. Hey, cheers to you guys. What the hell? Cheers. Yeah. Before I go out again, cheers. Right. <laughs> what do you know what happened, Brad? I have no idea. So I'm guessing I'm probably gonna get booted shortly, but technology well, happened. That's the problem with Brad. So yeah. Brad. No. <laughs> <laughs> damn, damn meddling kids that's Those what happened damn <laughs> kids how are you faring brad how have things been going we, we checked in with tim we heard from me how are you doing with with all this uh madness well whatever tim said you know that's how i was doing <laughs> no it's um it, it's been uh it's been different the bars are closed i've got nowhere to go um man it's it's odd I, we've been working on this new book. Um, I think I caught Tim talking a little bit about that. And, uh, you know, I, I've got such a routine down. And the gyms are closed now. The bars are closed. Restaurants are closed. I mean, it's it's just been very restrictive. Uh, but, yeah, you know, it's – you sit here and think about um, adjusting and how we're adjusting to this, and it's been so rough. And I look back and I'm like, holy shit, this has only been a week. So I guess the big question will be what it's going to be in, you know, two, three weeks from now, uh, if this is still going on. But this is, I look back and yeah, like three weeks ago, I was out in Estes Park with friends, um, hanging out at the Stanley Hotel for a weekend. Last weekend, I spent a weekend at the casino with some old college buddies. And now right. I can't go anywhere. So. And congratulations, Brad. You said the first swear. I did. Yeah. I, I did the first dirty word. <laughs> you did well done. J J yeah, I guess. I mean, why not? It's like it's like happy hour. We're at a speakeasy. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, who am I going to police that, right? So, so Jess Jess Smith has a great question. Uh, what are some of the um, What are some of the best uh, ghost stories from the UP that you guys have found? I like Jess's uh, graphics. Stay home and read books. I like that. Yeah. Um, I, I tell you what. Um, they're all in supernatural haunts. If you look over Tim's left shoulder, <laughs> we already got the plug in. Oh, Brad. You are. You are. We already oh, plugged in. Uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, ghost stories in here uh, live or, uh, about our about our actual investigations. But uh, what do you think, uh, Tim? Well, no, yeah, I mean, one. We have such great history up here, um, and, and and the stories are are more than we've been able to. To keep up with and we've been doing this for over 20 years so yeah uh you know it, it's it, obviously some of our favorites are thank you chris and wes uh some of our favorites are this book right you know of course seshua point we always say is one of our favorites seshua is probably number one and, and it's spelled s-e-u-l-c-h-o-i-x i believe yeah no one cares how, so, it's spelled. Um, how many yeah. have you had brad <sighs> Uh, three multiplied by carry the two and I don't know, a couple. You, you're so, in a metric beers now. <laughs> we are close <laughs> to Canada, although the bridge is cut off. So, but no, I yes. think Central Point is probably our top, 
you know, I, I think the team consensus would be Sichuan. Mm -hmm. it, it's an amazing lighthouse on uh, northern Lake Michigan. And we've never, we've investigated there, what, Tim, six, seven times. And we've never been yeah. there. We have not had activity. And yeah. it's, Tim wrote the chapter for the book. It's a great chat. Tim, why don't you uh, pick up a little bit on the captain, the little, little bit of the story there. Yeah, so Captain Townsend, it, 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 many psychics have gone through the lighthouse, and all of them agree on one thing. There's more than one ghost there. There's more than one spirit. Captain Townsend, though, would probably be the most popular one. He's had um, actually had some children books written about him and, and a, a little mouse. And um, so he's, he's the most popular of the ghosts. And, um, you know, one of the most we've always been asked, we, we get this asked all the time. Has anything so scary ever happened to you guys over the 20 plus years you've been doing this? Have you ever wanted to stop doing what you're doing? And the answer is no. But the closest to that moment actually was one of the nights that happened at Sichua Point Lighthouse, where um, we had an incident that was experienced by uh, over six of us. The entire team witnessed uh, what we knew to be something that shouldn't be happening. Uh, it, it wasn't a full body apparition, but it was as close as you're going to get to it. Watching curtains get pulled back from a window where there's no one in the house and we're all outside and we witnessed the curtains get pulled back just like if someone was grabbing it by hand and pulling it back and staying there for a while and then slowly shutting. It wasn't a wave. It wasn't just, you know, this thing got pulled back. No one was in the house. We locked the house down. We were outside. And then that moment that we had to get ready to go back into the house after that moment happened was the first time I'm reaching for the doorknob and I'm thinking to myself, why the hell <laughs> do we do this to ourselves sometimes? But it's that rush. It's that it's that rush you get in those moments when you're doing an investigation that keep you going. And um, it was, it, it was, it, it was intense. It was one of the most intense moments we've ever had. And, uh, and so, you know, and like Brad said, every time we've been to Sichua point, we've never left with something not happening that just leaves us boggled. And, uh, and we call it our Disneyland, our Disney world, because we enjoy going there so much. But yeah, you know, to ask if there are uh, ghost stories of, of the UP that need to be remembered and chronicled, absolutely. That's exactly why we did this book. I mean, we, we talk about this all the time, Brad. One of the funnest parts about doing this book was going back into the archives and opening up some files and cases we haven't touched in 15 years. And I'm trying to remember. Yeah, and to relive them. Thank God we take notes and to relive them. And uh and it, it was it was very it was so much fun to go back and open up some of those old files. The right. last time I interviewed you guys about this book was on stage at the Michigan Paracon last year. Yep. And if I recall correctly, we all had beer then too. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> You're right. We had and we had yeah, the entire team had beer and you did too. Yeah, we did. We were we were yeah, and then and then we ran out and then more came, which was amazing. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know what it is about you guys. There's always beer around. Yeah. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think, he's, I think he's really the first tea break. Wait, what's it? Hold on. <laughs> That's Brad. You uh, know, I, I think it just goes back to what you were saying, Jeff, about, uh, you know, how, you, you know, jokingly you say that uh, our event happens to be a, uh, a, a good party at a bar that happens to have some paranormal stuff to it. Um, you know, we're lucky to have the venue we have, which has three different bars in it. Um, and it's, <laughs> yeah. it's a great place to have it. And uh, we just have a blast. But um, we do enjoy our, uh, our, our happy hours, our social gatherings. And so it, by damned, if the first time our team was ever interviewed as a team uh, on the 10th anniversary of MI Paracon, you better believe we were going to have beer with us. <laughs> yeah. And I did it. I was your guy. I was your, yes, you, you know, you know the, we're we still on. Yeah, we're yeah. still on Brad. Yeah. Well done. And you know what the worst part, like, God, look at, I only, I only brought two upstairs to my office. I'm, I got dead soldiers you, here. You Brad, were sick. Picking things up. Uh oh, I just got a shot. It's time for some shots. Oh, no. Now you're doing shots. Wow. Yeah. Yes. I hope you brought enough for everyone. It's a Jager bomb. Cheers. <laughs> You're doing Jager bomb. Jesus. Well, it's, it's a speakeasy. It's okay. That's right. Thank you. I ran out of blocks, but the good news was I still had some old style down in the fridge. 
Are you, Brad, if I had to bet like my house that yeah. you would run out of booze right now, like I, I would say no, it's impossible. Like I, th I thought you would have like raided the liquor store. No, no, it's uh, we're, we're pretty well stocked, but going into winter in the UP, we usually are anyway. So we're all set for this crisis. Oh, that makes yeah. sense because like you yeah. could have 12 feet of snow and not be able to get to the liquor store. That's very true. You have 12 feet. Uh, of snow. Jeff, here's my question for you. Sure. Yeah. Well, awesome. There's no rules. Go ahead. You Brad and I, for years, you've partied with us for years. Why in the hell would you bring two beers to a social <laughs> gathering with Brad and I? I, I didn't know we would go this long. I, 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 I kind of thought like I was I, I mean, I had no plan. So, OK, funny thing this morning when I, I had the idea to just do this uh, was um, I, 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 I texted you guys and I said, hey, 30 on a Sunday morning. Yeah, it was yeah, it was eight thirty, and I said, "Hey guys, you want to do like a virtual happy hour?" And Brad, in like less than eight seconds, was like, "The bars are closed." Yes, like, <laughs> of, of course. Like, oh my god, of course. And I was uh, still sleeping. I didn't wake up for another two hours, but as soon as I got it, I was in. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Look, Jessica, she wants us to go longer than an hour. That's fine. So oh, I mean, drinking with us. We know she's one of the ones that are drinking with us. So I thought, like you know, in general, that's. Uh, that's that's what we could just do with these things. I mean, whatever. I've got this software, and we've got people that I guess want to have drinks with us and feel yep. social and connected, and that's really cool. Um, and it's weird too. Like, so what what do we usually talk about at happy hour? Right? We complain about our jobs, right, and, well, and stuff like that. Feelings. <laughs> feelings. Feelings. Uh, uh, Deborah, the only thing she's hoarded so far is alcohol. I get it. Yeah, I get that. Very good. Yeah, well done. No We're toilet paper to speak, speak of, but we have the receipts from the booze that we can use. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And Danielle from the Lazy Board now? Yeah, right. We, we you know, we got to do it. So is toilet paper all gone near you guys too? Yeah. I mean, it's it's crazy. The, the, the pictures you're seeing of empty aisles, it's here too. I mean, and then like, I, I was at work one day and my brother texted me. He says, I just left Meyer. They've got toilet paper. <laughs> and because and because and because my wife and I don't really like wipe your butts. <laughs> no, we've asked ourselves many I times: wonder, should we I be wonder. worried, and should we be, um, should we be like stocking up? And we're both pretty laid back people, and we hadn't, but we were getting low on toilet paper. And my brother okay, said, I, I saw a Meyer. So we ran, we got some. Brad, how many beers in are you? For real. This minute? Uh, this is number five. Oh, good. Well, 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 it is. And you guys are in the Eastern time zone. That's uh, okay. All right. You are cool. as well. You I am. Well. Yeah, we're all in the Eastern time zone. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I still don't understand the toilet paper thing. I, I don't care. Care. No, I, I can explain that to you. And this is we how led. This is how legends work, right? So uh, it's the same with stock market. It's the same with uh, so many things, right? So, okay, uh, for example, you get a snowstorm in the UP. The soup, the, who the? That was my dog. Okay, good. Yeah. So the, the Sault Ste. Marie schools are like, what do we do? Do we two hour delay? Do we close? It's one of those on the thing. And then they start looking at what all the neighboring schools are doing, mm -hmm. right? And if the neighboring schools close, then your schools close, right? It's all peer pressure. Monkey see, monkey do. Exactly. Yeah. So you can say hoarding toilet paper is ridiculous. They're going to keep making it. It's going to keep getting delivered to the stores. It will become available. However, if everyone else is grabbing all the toilet paper and you got like two rolls left, if you don't grab it while you see it, even mm -hmm. though you know it's ridiculous, you, you're out. Your family won't right. have toilet paper. And so we're forced to hoard because everyone else is. Now, the reality yeah. is, some, you know, lots of people out there have bought like two years worth of toilet paper. They're not buying toilet paper until like 2022, right? That's right. So what's going to happen is the people that only have like one or two rolls, like more is going to come in. They're going to be able to buy. And actually I predict, this is my bold prediction, within like two or three weeks, there's going to be an insane toilet paper surplus. <laughs> Where kids will literally be throwing this stuff at houses. That, that's right. Did you see the meme, right? That we all send each other. The meme yeah. that was like some some house totally toilet papered and it said this house is for sale on Zillow for 1.2 million because of all the toilet paper. So yep. uh Hatch is having an Irish coffee by the fire pit. Hatch lives Ask you. 
Yes. Hatch if lives by his fire pit. Oh, I'd be burning stuff. Yeah. I love that's... the fact that his fire pit is available. Mine is just starting to come out of hibernation, and I can't wait until the snow goes because I'm ready for a player. Uh, looks like Michelle has I, seven rolls I, left. What's your address, Michelle? <laughs> oh, Brad, how many do you have? <laughs> I I think we're down to two or three, but you're going to part with one for Michelle. That's the beer yeah. talking. You can no, 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 no. I was going to go robber, but no, you can what? Go, uh, what? Oh, nothing. Just Come like, on. So no, I think Actually, the best. Was, go ahead, Tim. I, no, I just saw Christine's thing there. She went to the store, and they're only allowing one. I know our yeah. local Walmart has finally put a limit on it, too. So I think the days of hoarding are, are coming yeah. to an end. It, it'll level out. I promise. It totally will. It, it'll level out yeah. soon, like in a couple of weeks. And um, yep. it'll be all right. But um, When the Charmin market crashes. and <laughs> well, no. Here's the thing. Brad and I and Steve, by the way, Steve LaPlante, who is the – third founding member of the UPPRS and the third author of this book. We were talking the other day, this that wonderful book. Right there. Yep. And this book here, a, a wonderful way to pass time while we're locked down. Shameless. Or B, yeah. if nothing else, these pages. Oh, the pages. yes. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Wait. Oh, all right. So see, it, it's, it's a double whammy. So I would buy a lot of these books, just like toilet paper. And then uh, right. you're going to be sent. Yeah. <laughs> that's brilliant i didn't even think that our books because you know we all write books you're right that right you if do. you can't get toilet paper and pretty soon our books might be cheaper than toilet paper I right. think they were <laughs> i love it and so as of right now uh the the conference is still to go right the conference is to go um tim do you want to talk there there's one oh we're going to do a big announcement that's what i heard yeah, I heard that too. Tim, do you want to, uh, there's only, I, I think we've announced everybody. We've still got some mm -hmm. workshops, galleries and stuff that we're going to put out there. We're holding off a little bit. Uh, yeah. Everything to kind of calm down, but we've got one more major presentation coming up that uh, panel, I guess. We do. So, and, and I know we haven't quite made the announcement yet because we were hoping to, we didn't feel we were quite done with it yet. Oh, but, so are we doing it? Are we announcing? We're announcing. We, okay. Yeah. It's announcing. We can announce this anyways. Uh, first time ever at Michigan Paranormal Convention. This being our 11th annual. Uh, long overdue, but we know people love the whole serial killer aspect of things. Um, because we're just wonderfully weird that way as a race. And uh, we are going to, for the first time, have a panel um, of family members who are related direct descendants of serial killers. And it'll be a panel discussion. Greg Lawson will be the moderator of it, who of course he is a, uh, a, a law uh, official. He, he works for the sheriff's department back in his, in, in his hometown. And so he will be the moderator of it. So for the first time ever, we're gonna have a serial killer panel at MI Paracon. We're pretty excited about that. Yeah, the wow. paranormal detective, Greg Lawson, he's, Greg is a former homicide detective, so we thought he'd be a natural at this. We've got yep. two people signed so far for the panel. We're working on a third one. Yes. I guess the one we're comfortable announcing is Jeff Mudgett, who's been with us several times. Sure. Um, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Tim. Run with this. Yeah, he, he's, of course, the great-great-grandson of H.H. H. Holmes, the first uh, – it said that to be the first American serial killer, at least on record by law, mm -hmm. um, an amazing story of Jeff being uh, a direct descendant of his. And he has a great book called Bloodstains that talks about it. And we've had Jeff with us before to talk about his journey, finding out about it. Now he's going to be part of a, a bigger picture, a bigger panel. Um, one of the names that we were working on, and we're we still haven't fully given up on it, but I, I don't I don't want to give the name, but. Let's just say we're really working hard to bring in some very well-known cases to be a part of this panel. So, uh, one more drink, and you're probably going to be spilling every name you know. <laughs> you never. That's, that's why happy hours are so dangerous. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so is, Which, by the way, I got to go get another. Drink. Be right I, back. What do I do? Do I just leave it with Brad while I run and get one? Oh, well, if you go get one, you can get one, Brad and I will take this over. Okay, yeah. hold on, hold on. You guys, say, Brad, contribute. 
All right. <laughs> so, so now, Army Night, Three Men in a Cave. Oh, go. Are no, we still talking serial killer? We were in secrecy on that night. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's right. uh, there's Ryan. there's Hillbilly. Hey, buddy. I saw. Just yeah. Saw Pipe in, all the way out in Seattle, or yeah, uh, cool. well, yeah, out in that area. You will. Oregon. Yes, our TSP member, Brian McLeod, still has to go to work, even though um, the world's ending. So thank you to Ryan and his family for contributing everything. Well, he's being a TSA agent. He's right there on on those lines. That can be a little tricky. He's right beside those tricky lines, being a TSA agent. So, yeah, no, that's that's awesome. Um, But, yeah, the serial killer thing is something new. We've never done at Michigan Paracon. We've never broach the true crime right yeah. right and that is so big right now it's so huge um always has been but i think the, the world of podcasting has really brought that storyline to a whole new level and i think that's why uh, it was about time out of boy he's back so here, here's the deal i had no idea that that beer on jaws was a real thing yes, like i'm there again I'm blown away by it. Please, this August, bring some to me. Oh, you got it. Not only that, I, in, in the summer, they'll put out uh, the can that's the same as the one in the movie, the special Jaws can. Oh, that's what I want. Please bring that to the soup. <laughs> Cheers, guys. There we go. Bring it in. Right up oh. to the webcam. Come on. There we go. Cheers. There we go. Well done. Nice. Hey, there's Tim Rehan. Hello, Tim. Yes, hey, it'll be a great panel. I agree. All right, I got to go figure out what beer I'm going to have next. I'll be right back. Okay. Wow. Yeah, the true crime thing. Um, it, it's yeah, no, no, no. True crime is is. Uh, thank you, Ryan. Appreciate that, buddy. So yeah, no. True. <laughs> part of the Uper's team. Uh, yes. He is. So no, the the um, no true crime is huge, and it's so intertwined. I know on Ghost Adventures we've done stories of like serial killers and. And stuff like that. I mean, that stuff haunts us. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, well, we actually have an interview with you, Jeff, on Creaking Door Paranormal Radio, which was you, of course, being the lead researcher for Ghost Adventures. You guys did that great series on serial killers. We got, we had the honor of interviewing you prior to them being released on air. And I thought that was one of my favorite interviews ever for Creaking Door. Well, you're just saying that because. We're live, and you've had some drinks. <laughs> it's fuzzy. It's, uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I love you guys. Have we hit that stage already? <laughs> I love you. You're my best friends. I love and, you. I think the first time that we and it it it's oh. very appropriate for what we've got going on uh, was the first time that Tim and I, at least, had ventured into anybody with true crime. Was Jeff Mudgett? We had him yeah. on Speaking Door. Wait, and speaking. Hold on, guys. Speaking of true crime, yeah, uh, Christopher. Christopher right. here. Uh, Chris hey, is, is the Amityville kid. Christopher lived in the Amityville house with the Lutz family, yep. and uh, and has been at previous Michigan paranormal conferences. Good to see you, Several Christopher. Yes, and so, uh, true crime, of course. I mean, you know, she's six Great people murdered good. in that house. No, no mm-hmm. question. Yeah. Yeah. No. But no, that so, was uh, Jeff. Jeff Mudgett. We met at Ursula Bielski's uh, Chicago. Yep conference yes and we brought him up for michigan paracon and there were several times not many over the last 11 years that we've had dead silence in the theater during a presentation one was chris cortino when he was there Mm -hmm. talking about the amityville case remember that like the whole i mean you could hear a pin drop in that audience and and the other the other was jeff mudgett talking about hh holmes yeah yeah for sure the first First time we had Jeff, that that the entire and the in the in the theater was was packed, mm-hmm. and oh, yeah. it was dead silence. People were hanging on every word he had to say, and I have no idea what that feels like, but it was outstanding. <laughs> 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 Come on, your panel was great. Remember that we had beer and stuff. We already said that. That was awesome. <laughs> you guys are the best, man. Way, oh, man. So my next beverage, you're gonna yeah. this. I, I went, I went seltzer water. I did. Um, don't the mermaid one's not bad though. I'll give you that. I call these fun waters, and they are fun. Wow! So my next beverage. 
I'm not saying I lost all respect for you, Tim. In other words, you're out of beer. <laughs> no, I'm not. Actually. You are I just out of beer. beer. I just yeah. wanted something yeah. different. Tammy was there. She thought the H.H. H. Holmes, yeah, for sure. Yep. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Uh, American Horror Story picked up on that and did the whole, the one season. They the roughly, the yeah, they, they wrapped yeah. into that. Um, and then they Jeff had his, what was American Ripper? Right. On, was it History? Oh, the yeah. History I think it was history, history, yeah. Ripper, yeah. Yeah. Who, oh, here's Scott wants addicted. to know, yeah, who's your UFO-related guest at Paracon this year? And before you answer that, look at this. Everybody, the whole like Upers team oh. is here. Who's Steve? I recognize Steve. that name. Steve's <laughs> part of the Upers team, of course. He's the I referenced him already. He is the third founding member with myself and Brad of the Upper Peninsula Paranormal Research Society, and he is the third author of this wonderful book. He's the silent member. He can't listen. beat Tim and I. So listen, he, he, Greg Lawson. We, will, you, and I will have our own, uh, you know, speakeasy night. Just you and I. Don't worry, Greg. You'll get your tan your chance. But let's get back to this oh, question wow. from Scott. Go ahead. Oh yes. Who are your featured UFO related? That's a great question, Scott. Thank you for asking. Great, great question. <laughs> we we have uh, it's we we kind of shied off from the UFO thing for a couple of years because there's a UFO con in michigan now um but we were friends with them tim and i spoke at that last year uh down in houghton lake they have another one going this year it's going to be amazing but um we've got uh a ufo panel going and it's it's the first time we broached a subject since stanton friedman died he was our last ufo speaker yeah yeah so we've got uh it's going to be fun we've got nick redfern yep um Help help me if this with this if I forget anyone, Tim. Nick Redfern, Heather Taddy from UFO uh, Highway. Highway, yeah. Andrea Perrin, who is yep. uh, goes and sings to UFOs, so we all yep. love her for that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Every uh, every uh, year, there's something out in yeah. the parking lot. Yes, yeah. there is. Bill Konkoleski, yeah. the head of the yep. uh, UFO MUFON for Michigan. Yep, he's the head of the MUFON chapter for Michigan, I believe. Yeah. Seems I'm missing. We're, oh, Brian Kano is going to sit on that. Just for me. Uh, yeah. He'll do anything that Brian J. Kano. <laughs> he is a whore for anything. <laughs> so we've got Brian on it. Those five, and it's going to be uh, Aaron Sagers moderating that one. Oh, good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Jessica, cheers. Third beer. Yeah, good stuff. Hey, so, um, gents, like I asked you for a half hour, and we've blown past that significantly. Um, so I kind of think like, Hey, let's, let's like, Oh, but then there's Lance son of a gun. The whole Euchre team is here. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if Lance is having is imbibing with us tonight. Cause, uh, we were over at his house last night and he imbibed as, as how is that social us, distancing going? <laughs> well, it, it was fine because we were all six feet apart mm. and, uh, <laughs> we all sat six feet apart and, uh, he, he lives a door down. I can go hang out with him. And be oh, good. All right. All and right. Uh, but anyways, he, he he was imbibing last night, so I don't know if he is right now. But I'm glad he tuned in. Fair enough. Well, guys, so let's yeah. wrap this up. I thanks for doing this. Like this is, I just thought we'd have beer and let people watch, and that's <laughs> uh, that's pretty much exactly what happened. <laughs> so, well, this, this worked out well, so I'm glad we could be your guinea pigs. Yeah. And uh, and and I look forward to seeing other episodes that you're going to do now with the Speakeasy. Yeah, I just thought like, you know, I mean, I miss my friends and I miss like being able to see people. So let's do this. Let's just hang out and have some drinks and talk about life or whatever. I mean, you got your plugs in shamelessly, I might add. I mean, <laughs> my God, you know, you're just, uh, you know, the, the book and everything else. It was great. But um, yeah, well, thank you guys. Too, but if you have the board and you want to check out miparacon.com or youpernaturalhaunts.com. It's right there at the bottom of the screen, Brad. It's going. Your plugs. It's, it's I did wear my readers, goddamn. <laughs> so, hey, thank you guys for listening. Thanks for watching. And, um, you know, this will be on Facebook, and people can can watch it again whenever they want. So appreciate you guys. I mean, you know, cheers. I hope the next time we have a yeah. beer, it's, it's in person. But this is the next exactly. best thing for sure. Or... If you're bored enough and you want us back for another one of these episodes, count me in. I, I mean, happy hour is usually nightly, right? That's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Afternoonly. 
So good stuff, man. All right, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you all. Thank you guys. We appreciate you. Hope you guys had a few drinks, had a few laughs and I'll do this again. I mean, why not? It'll be a, yep. it'll be a blast. So cheers guys. All right. All right. Thanks. Guys. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.